Okay, the title of today's sermon is Tisha B'Av and the Nation of Israel. Tisha B'Av and the Nation of Israel. They will show you those, uh, the title momentarily. There it is on the video screen. How many of you before today have never heard of Tisha B'Av? Okay. All right, well, you guys are in for a treat. Torpor Devarim emphasizes the importance of God's Word. Amen? We just saw that, right, in the Torah portion, in the Torah service? An often forgotten truth in God's Word is the Jewish people's connection to the land of Israel. How many of you... Back in church, you were taught a lot about the Jewish people's connection to the land of Israel. If, if you were, you were blessed. You were lucky. But most were not taught about the Jewish people and their connection to the land of Israel. I was not. Well, this Wednesday night starts Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av literally means the ninth day of Av, A-V the ninth day of the Hebrew month called Av. On this date, many horrible, and when I say many, I mean many. I've got two slides for you with a list of the many horrific, horrible catastrophes that have occurred to the Jewish people and the nation of Israel concerning the land on this day. So let's take a look at some of those. First, you remember I've been preaching recently about the ten spies who came back faithless, did not believe in the word of God. God said to them, I am going to give you this land. They didn't remember it. They didn't have it as frontlets between their eyes and wrapped around their arm and the zit zit. They went in and they didn't have faith. And they come back and they spoke the wrong thing. That happened, excuse me, that happened on Tisha B'Av. Fast forward about 900 years. In the year 423 B.C., the first temple was destroyed. Fast forward 300 in 70 some odd years, the second temple was destroyed. The same day, Tisha B'Av, the same day. Fast forward another 65 years, 135 A.D., you have a revolt against Rome resulting in a massacre, a slaughter of the Jewish people. On the same day, Tisha B'Av. Well, guess what? I'm not finished. There's more. Look at this. A thousand years later, in the year 1290 A.D., the Jewish people were expelled from England. 200 years later, 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and he had a ship, I believe, full of Jewish people coming to America. Why? Because in 1492, on Tisha the Jews were banished, the Spanish acquisition, from Spain. And it happened on Tisha B'Av. In 1914, Germany enters World War I on Tisha B'Av. And you know how Germany felt about the Jewish people, right? Now, this was World War I. But then later in World War II, in 1941, you have the start of the Holocaust. Now, I know the Holocaust started at different times at different places because the Holocaust was a big thing. It wasn't just one location, right? So it started at different times at different places. But one of the places, it started on Tisha B'Av. So now you know about this day and how horrific. Now you know while they fast and pray, starting this Wednesday night at sunset on Tisha B'Av. 
and why we should join in with them. Why? Because there's a lot of hatred still out there. There's a lot of anti-Semitism still out there. There's a lot of people that would still love to do things to Israel and the Jewish people on this day and every other day, right? This is why they need to be back in their own land. This is why they need a strong defense, a strong military. Amen? But I want you to notice, okay, we talked about Germany, we talked about what Spain did and England did, what Rome did. Notice how every nation that came against Israel either no longer exist if you go back to Babylon. I mean, they exist, but different names, different forms, right? Either they no longer exist, the Canaanites and all of those, or they're extremely weaker than they once were. Look at the UK. Look at Spain, right? The UK, they used to say the sun never sets on the UK, on the United Kingdom. Well, they mishandled what... Uh, how Israel was born, they wouldn't allow the Jewish people just to come right in there when they controlled the land. And now look. Look at them now, how small the kingdom of the United Kingdom is now compared to what it once was. Why? Because Genesis, Genesis 12, 3 says, they'll show it on the screen. This is from the complete Jewish Bible. I will bless those who bless you, talking about Israel, but I will curse anyone who curses you, talking about Israel. Now that applies not only to nations, but that applies to people as well. If you bless Israel and the Jewish people, we will be blessed. Amen? That's why it, it is such a pillar here at the olive tree to bless the Jewish people and bless Israel. You know, I've told you this before, and I'll tell you again. There is Torah-keeping uh, congregations, uh, Sabbath-keeping congregations. They don't emphasize Israel at all. Don't mention them. They don't emphasize or mention the Jewish people at all. It's as if, they might not say this, but it's as if they're saying, we've replaced them. We are better than them. Do not go to one of those congregations. You need to go to a congregation that loves Israel and supports them. Not just verbally, but ministries, people on the ground. Amen? With your finances, with your material blessings. I'll go ahead and just read this right now. Uh, Alex, this is one of the very last slides if you want to pop it up. Uh, Romans 15, 27. This is from the complete Jewish Bible. Romans 15, 27 says, For if the Gentiles have shared with the Jews in spiritual matters, if we've, if we've uh, been grafted into them spiritually and we've got their word and their Bible and their Messiah, spiritual matters, then the Gentiles clearly have a duty to help the Jews in material matters. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, go back to, to where we were on the slides in the back. So, Scripture spoke of a day when God will return Israel to the land, when God will return the Jewish people to its land. Amen? So let's turn and read about that. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 through 15. Amos 9, 11 through 15. Now, this is still being, this Scripture is still being partially fulfilled. Amen? They'll have it pulled up here on the screen as well for you to read. Again, I'm reading from the Tree of Life version. Verse 11 says, In that day I will raise up David's fallen sukkah. What is sukkah? That's the tabernacle. That is, uh, some translations there might say tent. David's fallen tent. What is the difference between David's tent, David's tabernacle rather than the temple or the tabernacle in the wilderness. What was the difference? You guys know? David's tent is when he brought the ark up to Jerusalem for the first time. There was no temple in Jerusalem. There was no tabernacle in Jerusalem. He brought it up and he put it out in the open 
in an open court with nothing over the ark but a tent. That was it. You could literally see the ark. You were that close, Jew or Gentile, anybody that was there. There was no priesthood to go through. There was none of the ceremonies, none of the, none of the sacrifices. You were right there in the Holy of Holies. Nothing but a tent separating you. Amen? And a matter of fact, in the book of Acts chapter 15 at the Jerusalem Council, the disciples said the fulfillment of David's tabernacle, David's sukkah, fallen sukkah, is being fulfilled. And it's still being fulfilled today with Messianic congregations, Jew and Gentile, coming together as one, echad, to worship the Lord together. So continue reading. In that day I will raise up David's fallen sukkah. I will restore its breaches, raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old. So they may possess the remnant of Edom. What's Edom? That's the Gentiles. The Gentiles will join them. And all the nations called by, na by my name. It is a declaration of Adonai, of the Lord, the one who will do this. Behold, days are soon coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper. What's that talking about? That's the land of Israel being so prosperous that they're still picking grapes and treading grapes when it's t that time of year to plow and plant again. Imagine your gardens going all winter long and you're going out there picking tomatoes and cucumbers all winter long and all of a sudden it's the first of April again. It's time to plow and plant again. That's what this is referring to. There's a day coming, says the Lord. That's how blessed the land of Israel is going to be when the Jewish people come back. If you ever look at satellite imagery of the nation of Israel, you can clearly see where the Jewish people live compared to the Arabs. There's a green line that you can literally see where God has blessed the land because the Jewish people are back there. Amen? So continue reading uh, in verse 13. The days are coming says the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper and the one treading grapes, the one sowing seed, the mountains will drip sweet wine and all the hills will melt over. Yes, I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. They will rebuild desolate cities. Have they done that, Scott, Teresa, Mickey? You guys have been there. Have they done that? Amen. And dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. Have they done that? Amen. They will make, they will also make gardens and eat their fruit. Verse 15. Yes, I will plant them on their land. And listen to this. And they will never, 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 never again be plucked up out of their land that I have given to them. Adonai, your God, has said it. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, give the Lord a hand clap. But yet on Tisha B'Av, again, what is Tisha B'Av? For those that are just joining us, Tisha B'Av is the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av. And it starts this Wednesday night at sunset. When all of these catastrophes happen, the first, the second temple was destroyed. The ten spies came back with a bad report. The Spanish Inquisition, England threw them out. All these things happened. The Holocaust started, World War I started. All these things on this horrible day. But God's saying, I'm going to bring them back. And they're never going to be plucked out of their land again. And that land is going to blossom. It's going to bloom. As a matter of fact, look on the screen at Isaiah 35, 1. Again, from the Tree of Life version. It says, the wilderness and dry land will be glad. The desert will rejoice and blossom like a lily. Has that happened? Yes. Amen. That has happened. That is happening. This prophecy in Isaiah has clearly come to pass with Israel now being one of the leading agricultural producers in the Middle East and Europe. Did you know that? 
they provide a lot of food and agriculture to the rest of the Middle East. The green or blossom land, as I said earlier, can even be seen from satellite imagery. Isaiah 66, 8. I'm just going to reference this one. You can write this down. Read it tonight when you get home. Isaiah 66, 8. Ask the question, can a nation be born in a day? You ever heard that verse? Can a nation be born in a day? That's exactly what happened on May 14th, 1948, when the United States was the first nation in the UN to declare Israel as a sovereign nation. Amen. Amen. You can give a hand clap for that for the United States. But don't get too excited about the United States because i got a few other things to say about them. Okay? We still need prayer. <clears throat> When the covenant land of Israel is negotiated or compromised, you can observe the bad consequences in that country responsible. Did you understand what I'm saying? When the land of Israel, that covenant land that God gave them, when another country tries to negotiate it and divide it and compromise it, you can observe that nation that's trying to divide the land of Israel, you can observe something bad happen. It's, and a lot of times it happens quick, immediately. And I'm getting ready to show you. Is, it, this will be, I actually know it won't be on the screen. You'll have to take good notes on this. Uh, but I'm going to point out a few things that the United States has done. This has been true with the United States when the United States has tried to divide the land. I have four things that I want to point out to you. Remember that book I showed you at the beginning of the service real thick? It has a lot of this stuff in it. Now, some of this I had to do my own research. So if you have a pen and paper, Karen, and you're going to want to write this down. <laughs> On September the 10th, 2001, is that date ring a bell, what happened? What's the very next day? 9-11? Okay, on September 10th, 2001, and my source is the Washington Post, the United States had completed the majority of a plan to divide the land of Israel into two nation states. What happened the next day? On September 11th, 2001, the World Trade Centers in New York were attacked along with the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., along with the other plane that crashed in the field in Pennsylvania. One day, one day, when that plan was completed, the very next day. The United States, here's my second point. The United States helped put together a plan for Israel to withdraw from the Gaza Strip. My source is the Jerusalem Post. This plan was carried out on August 15th, 2005. So August 15th, 2005 is when the Jews were forced to remove, to be removed from the Gaza Strip. Fourteen days later, two weeks later, on August 29th, 2005, Hurricane Katrina made landfall in Louisiana. Fourteen days later. Again, God's word says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. But, another point, on, on, that, on that same point, number two, if you're taking notes, that day that the Jews were forcibly removed from the Gaza Strip in 2005, that just so happened to be Tisha B'Av the ninth day of Av, when the first temple was destroyed, the second temple was destroyed, and on and on and on. You see why that day is so sad, why they fast and pray starting this Wednesday night through Thursday night. Okay, here's my third thing, my third point that the United States did. On January 28th, 2020, oh, now we're getting close to our day. January 28, 2020, the United States revealed yet another plan 
for a two-state solution, according to the New York Times. By March of 2020, two months later, the United States was one of the hardest-hit countries in the world with COVID. Now, COVID was going around the world before, but when the United States just, yeah, we're going to divide the nation of Israel, boom. Our country was hit and hit hard. This is shocking, isn't it? God's word is true, like I said earlier. He says, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those who curse you. I have one more point for you. Then we're going to go read Zechariah. On January 31st, 2021, the United States reaffirmed its support for a two-state solution. That's according to the U.S. Department of State. Two weeks later, on February 14th, and I have somebody in the back that can confirm this, two weeks later, on February 14th, 2021, the entire state of Texas was frozen over with ice and was without electricity. One of my members sitting here was there in Houston area. Two weeks. That book I showed you earlier from William Koenig, it has probably a hundred more of these events that took place. These are just a few. I just started in 20 years ago in 2021, or I'm sorry, the year 2001, 20 years ago. But look at how many things have happened. Let's go read Zechariah. Again, it's on the screen from the Tree of Life version behind me. The Tree of Life version is very similar to the uh, New American Standard if you have one of those. Now pay close attention if you're reading from your own Bible. The Tree of Life Bible is, uh, is made from the Hebrew Bible. Right? So if you're following in a different, like a King James, New King James, New American Standard, you need to read, let me pull it up here, you need to read chapter 2, verses 8 through 13, okay? Chapter 2, 8 through 13. But if you have a Hebrew Bible, it's chapter 2, 12 through 17. Or just read the words on the screen behind me. Zechariah 2, verse 12. For thus says Adonai Sevo'oth, the Lord of hosts, He has sent me after glory to the nations that plundered you. Remember the nations that do wrong to Israel? He has sent me after glory to the nations that plundered you. Because whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. Whoever touches Israel touches the apple of God's eye. You know what the apple of your eye is? The, the pupil, the very center. You ever tried touching that? It's, it's difficult, right? Can I touch your pupil, Leighton? You, come on. Oh. Who, yeah, who, whoever touches Israel touches the pupil of God's eye. It's poking God in the eye. That's painful. And you're liable, if I was to poke Leighton and I'm, I'm liable to get a reaction, right? So, yeah. We will get a reaction when we touch Israel. Keep reading. For behold, verse 13, if I'm following in the Jewish Bible, I'm in verse 9 if you're in a King James or New King James. For behold, I will shake my hand against them, and they will be plunder to their servants. Then you will know that Adonai Sevaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of God's army, has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, of Zion. For behold, I am coming, and I will live among you, declares the Lord Adonai. Verse 15. In that day... Many nations will join themselves to Adonai. Remember the Gentiles coming and joining themselves to the Lord, being saved, born again, accepting the Jewish Messiah? And they will be my people, and I will dwell among them. 
Then you will know that Adonai Sevaot has sent me to you. Verse 16. Adonai will inherit, or inhabit, I'm sorry, Judah. Now, Judah and Samaria, that's the West Bank, right? That's part of the land that they're wanting to divide. But look at what it says. Adonai, the Lord, will inhabit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will once again choose Jerusalem. That's in the process of happening, right, Scott, right, Teresa? It's not quite there yet, but the Messianic movement, believers, they're, they're trying to get it there. Amen? Amen? In verse 17... Be silent before Adonai all flesh. What does that mean? I, I read some commentaries on that. That means that the nations will be shocked and silent at how God brings back Jerusalem, how God brings back the nation of Israel, how it will flourish and prosper once again and be green once again. Amen? Be silent before Adonai all flesh, for he has aroused himself from his holy dwelling. Amen? So, what should our response be? I have three verses. I'll show them on the screen here behind me. People might could say, what can I do? What, what can I do to help? Number one, Psalm 122, verse 6 from the Tree of Life version says, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But look at what it says. May those who love you be at peace. How many of you want to be at peace? There's a promise. A promise in God's Word that if you love Jerusalem and love Israel and support them and help them, you will have peace. Psalm 122.6. Isaiah 62, verse 1. Again, I'm reading from the Tree of Life. says, For Zion's sake, I will not keep my silence. What did we read about earlier? God has placed a watchman on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will not be silent day or night. Isaiah 62. For Zion's sake, I will not keep my silence. For Jerusalem's sake... I will not rest. Amen? Amen? So, what's our part? We pray for Jerusalem. We speak out and speak for Jerusalem and Israel and the Jewish people. But then I have the last one that I've already mentioned to you, but I want to point it out again. Romans 15, 27. This is where ministries like Scott and Teresa's come into play. This is where ministries like um, Pastor Salim, who's trying to reconcile Jew and Arab together. This is where the Joseph Project comes into play. Romans 15, 27, this is from the Complete Jewish Bible. I like how they word it. It just makes it simple. For if the Gentiles have shared with the Jews in spiritual manners, the Jewish Messiah is our Lord and Savior, right? The Scriptures written by the Jews... If we have shared with the Jews in spiritual matters, then the Gentiles clearly have a duty to help the Jews in material matters. Amen? Also, I don't have this on my notes, but I'll bring this up. We are to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Why? Because we have the very Mashiach, Messiah, that they are looking for. Amen? Amen? And another reason, another point to provoke the Jews to jealousy is through our love and compassion for them. Because you see, you, you see, go back to those slides at the beginning, guys, where we show all those horrific things that happened on Tisha B'Av. You see that they've not been loved very much throughout history, Right? Look at that. Look at all those things. I've already went through that, so I'm not going to go through it again. But look at all those things. So if we love them, we're getting their attention. They're saying, but you're a Gentile. But you're one of those believers in Yeshua, Jesus. So why do you love me? And you say, 
because of this. Because of the Word. And you are the people of the Word. And because my Messiah is Jewish, and He's your Messiah as well. Amen? Amen. That will provoke them to jealousy. So in closing, I always give my practical application how you can apply this sermon. I don't just teach you full of knowledge like a college course, but I want you to apply, just like I talked about earlier in our Torah reading of faith and speaking the Word of God. Death and life's in the power of the tongue. You've got to apply that, folks. You can't just say, Robert believes that, and Robert preaches that, and I believe it in my heart. You've got to speak it and apply it. Amen? Amen. So how can you apply this sermon today? During this Tisha B'Av, this Wednesday night, do not forget the Word of God concerning the Jewish people and their land. Let us pray and fast along with our Jewish brothers and sisters. Let us bless the Jewish people and provoke them to jealousy unto salvation in Yeshua. Let us play our part in fulfilling the biblical prophecy of restoring Israel. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray that this sermon here today does not fall on deaf ears. Lord, I pray that this sermon stokes the hearts of the people, Father, to pray for our nation, the United States, and for our leaders, our leadership, that they will do what is right concerning the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. Father, I pray that we as individuals will do our part by helping other ministries and reaching out to Jewish people and sharing to them the gospel. Father, I pray that you send people here to the olive tree that has a heart for Israel and a heart for Jerusalem and the Jewish people so that we can be a better witness to them, that we can be a better support and a better help to them, uh, to, to our ministries that are in the land of Israel. Father, help us to be better witnesses of your word so that we can provoke the Jewish people to jealousy unto salvation so that they will receive Messiah Yeshua as their Lord and Savior so that they will receive the living word that we've been talking about today, the Devarim, the living word, Yeshua the Messiah. And it's in His name I pray. Amen and amen. So, if you're visiting with us, don't go anywhere, just remain in your seats. I want to bless everyone with the ironic benediction at this time. Uh, this is the blessing that God gave to uh, Aaron and the high priest, and he said, bless the people with this. So let's all stand. Gather with your family, your mishpacha. We're all family here. If you see somebody standing by themselves, join in beside them. And let's bless one another with these words. Yavarekaka Adonai Vayishmareka Yair Adonai Peinaveleka Vikuneka Yisa Adonai Peinaveleka Vayasim lecha shalom. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Peace in the name of Yeshua our Messiah, our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace. Amen and Amen. God bless you all. You all may be seated. We're going to close out our live stream right now, and then we have a couple of announcements. we got to pray for one of our sisters here in just a moment, so don't go anywhere if you're in person. Uh, but I want to wish everyone that's watching online a Shabbat Shalom, Shavua Tov. Have a good week. Don't forget to share this. Don't forget to go to olivetreemessianic.org, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. We are all over the Internet, so go check us out. Shabbat Shalom. 
Have a good day. God bless you all.